What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Dual Shockers preview of the actual Nintendo Switch operating system and startup. This is Luke and Taldi, reviews editor over at Dual Shockers. Uh, and we're going to go into what it takes to start the console up and what kind of features come packed in. Uh, this isn't necessarily what's going to be there day one because we do have limited system access before it launches. All right, so starting with how it starts up, of course, you pick your language like you would just about for any piece of technology. Uh, and then, of course, from there, subdivisions of the language, we got the Americas. Uh, the end user licensing agreement, of course, no one actually reads it. We'll scroll through it because we have to. If this is interesting to you, feel free to pause and look through it all. But let's go to the next one. Now, we didn't get to test out the functionality for Wi-Fi and how long the range is. Of course, these are all very close to me in my uh, workspace. Now that I'm done actually typing in the password, we go through and connect. You might notice that there's not really any uh, background music, which I thought was interesting. It's a very simple uh, startup and a very simple UI in the same way. And you'll see when everything is in. Okay, so we're successfully connected. Good. From there, we pick the time zones. Now, anyone who's ever set up any piece of technology will be used to this kind of setup. It is very simple. This is where it starts getting a little more interesting. You get your icon and nickname. Uh, the icons, of course, have leaked before, but this is the full range. If you want to take a look again, uh, of course, we got Zelda, we got all the mainstays, of course, the original Mario Brothers, uh, Splatoon, Metroid, and I absolutely have to go with Metroid. Uh, also, for the background, you get to pick a background color if it changes it for you at all. Uh, I, of course, I'm going to go with, I think, dark red, because that seems most Metroid-y. Uh, so let's go OK on that. Now we'll add a nickname, and my nickname will be Lou. Simple. Easy. It pops up. And as you can see, you can have eight different users on this. We're only going to make the one because there's no reason. We have parental controls here. Uh, largely, I'm imagining it doesn't matter to most people who are visiting Dual Shockers. And with that, the setup's complete. It's actually very simple to set it up. And just like it's simple to set it up, it's a very, very simple UI. Not too much functionality, and I'm not sure if that will expand after the day one update. Now, you can see this is the settings view uh, for my individual profile. At the moment, we can't do the systems update. I wasn't sure of that yet, but apparently that goes live after uh, servers go up. So without that, there are a few other things. You got a friends list, and you can add friends. Uh, and then you have some user settings, uh, linking your Nintendo account. Uh, also, that's where the main games will go. It's unclear whether you can build folders. There's really no software to test that on yet. Now, we've just opened the news section. The news section will have all of, I imagine, news. Uh, at the moment, what it has is kind of instruction manuals for how to do basic things, how to charge the console, uh, how to uh, play games, uh, how you could play two-player uh, two games, even though we're not necessarily doing that yet. Uh, so if you want, we can go through all of these, and in fact, we will go through all of these in case you want to read what exactly the news is. Unfortunately, uh, eShop and all internet services are turned off, so we can't really go into things further than that. Hopefully, we'll be able to show you that uh, when the system update goes live a little bit before launch on March 3rd. Um, all right, so now I'll shut up for a little bit, and you can continue to read this if you so want to. If not, feel free to press this button and skip through the news.
Well, now that we're done with the news, we can keep going on. As I mentioned, the eShop isn't open. Let's go into the album. Now, in order to take a screenshot, all you have to do is click the left Joy-Cons button that they have. It's very, very simple. It goes straight to the album. And from the album, you could look, you can edit. Uh, for editing, it's fairly simple. Let's just put in Harambe because this is the internet and that is what we must do. Um, so you enter the text, which is really only done with the Joy-Con. There's no motion control like there is for the PlayStation, the DualShock 4. And you get what seems like a very meme-worthy font for those who want to go and instantly make a meme on here. Uh, from there, you could shift it. You can rotate it if you so desire, make it smaller or larger, like that. And you could also change the color of it. So. Here we go. Uh, from there, you can copy it, and you can post it. Um, unfortunately, we don't have access to post anything yet, though we'll report on that functionality when we get there. Uh, also, we have this controllers tab. The controllers tab uh, mostly is used to pair and change the order of controllers. Uh, not really much there either. Um, in the settings, we have a few different settings things, error history. Uh, this is very typical for just any kind of uh, piece of hardware. Uh, an airplane mode, because this is a console you would bring on an airplane. Uh, screen brightness, which I can't edit because right now I'm recording on the TV. Uh, lock console and sleep mode. That creates an interesting screen. Um, we'll see if we can go into it further. But then we have parental controls, which we've seen internet connection which we've already set up so this is kind of um, no reason to go into that uh, let's test the connection for a little bit let's see what kind of upload and download speeds of course I'm right next to the router it isn't connected to Ethernet because we don't have an Ethernet port and this is taking a fairly long time compared to my PlayStation 4 to show the up and down speeds uh, but let's see what kind of speeds we're getting over Wi-Fi uh, as a means to gauge exactly how the receiver is going to operate. Uh, so 15 download to upload uh, for megabytes per second. That's not too bad. Not great, but not too bad. Uh, as you can see, we have 26 gigabytes available. Uh, and there's nothing really on this yet. I don't even have any saved data. Uh, you also have that micro SD card slot, which in the grand scheme of things we can't show either because we don't have that functionality yet. This is where you go and edit your Mies, uh, which we won't show, it's the standard Mii selection thing. Uh, of course the different themes, hopefully they add more to it, but the dark theme is actually beautiful. I think I'm going to keep that on. Uh, notifications, sleep mode, uh, and then simple control and TV settings, which once again uh, is really what we've already seen nothing really new in that. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is a very, very simple UI. This is, I mean, I know a lot of people say that PlayStation 4 has a streamlined UI, and it does, but uh, as compared to this, th this seems very streamlined to be the game console. And maybe it's because it is what's available pre-launch, and maybe that's just the uh, design that Nintendo developers are going for specifically in building this hardware uh, but either way I, I think they make their point clear that this is mostly going to be used for Nintendo games and Nintendo consoles there's the sleep mode and we're not going to enter into sleep mode but that's for quick charging and whatnot you can also hold down the power button to uh, to go into a uh, full shutdown. Now while I get a game to just see how the game displays on this, I want to make note that I have tried connecting this to Wi-Fi that uh, requires authentic uh, authentication and at the moment you can't connect to it, uh, of course, because there is no internet browser included with that. That's one of the big controversies uh, with Nintendo Switch and that is something worth noting. Uh, so I've just added The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and you can see how it pops up and how it takes up a nice big uh, screen space. Now pressing the plus or minus 
on the joy cons you come up to this and you have the software update managing the software a little part for my uh, nintendo rewards program and that really isn't discussed too much uh for how you're earning points i hope that gets fleshed out and then some other information uh none of this is necessarily important it's not like we're reading the manual but now you're getting a general idea of how simple this ui is and really that is just about everything when you click on it to start the game it comes up with a uh, profile selection here we go and it says lou so you can select the user to play the game with it's i guess you don't have to necessarily pick the one you're playing as and that is everything thank you for watching the dual shockers preview of the operating system uh and stick around for the full review coming in about a week thanks everyone